Welcome to the Municipality Monroeville Planning Commission meeting, August 18th, 2021. Uh, everybody please rise as we pledge allegiance to the flag and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated, please. <clears throat> Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Stevenson. Here. Mr. Pacusa. Mr. Conway. Here. Ms. Krifta. Here. Ms. Montgomery. Here. Mr. Gearhart. Here. Mr. Walker. Here. Mr. Weldon. Here. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from July 21st, 2021 meeting. So moved. So I second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, Paul. Okay, we have uh, some items under old business, and the first three have requested to be tabled. Uh, so 21-2-C, Dreamers and Achievers Early Education, uh, via email requested to be tabled uh, for this month so hopefully we'll see them next month item 2 21-5 st shri shirty side baba temple and 213 c uh, also the temple uh, they requ uh, requested to be tabled as well so the first three items are tabled and hopefully we'll see them next month uh, fourth item is 21-6 st rashid hassan tennis center Applicant is requesting site plan approval to construct a four-court indoor tennis facility and associated site amenities. The property is located along Wingate Drive and identified as tax parcel 744A272 in the C2 Business Commercial Zoning District. Uh, it was tabled last month, so we need to have a motion to remove it from the table before it can move forward tonight. I'll entertain that motion. Make a motion to remove it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Applicant present? Yes. Have you signed in, sir? Please do so and state your name for the record. My name is Ray Gusty from Farring and McCarty Gray. The applicant, Rashid Hassan, is also here tonight as well. All right. Is he going to speak, or if so, he needs to sign in? Okay. He, he may if you have any questions for okay. him. Uh, if I can orient everyone to the drawing here, Wingate Drive is along the right-hand side. Our entrance, or proposed entrance, lines up with Arden Court's entrance located here. The Rocket Car Wash is located above our site, and Tech One Drive is located on what I call the back of the site that defines the back portion of the site. We're proposing a, uh, a 27,600-square-foot building that will house four tennis courts, and this, uh, this bump out area up front here is uh, the main entrance. Uh, there's office built, there's offices, reception, restrooms, and a viewing area within that area as well. Uh, all utilities are available to the site from Wingate Drive. Um, the site is in a uh, watershed that has a 50% release rate, so we actually have two underground detention systems. One is an underground tank located here near the main entrance that will collect runoff from the cul-de-sac, the road, and this slope area. The second is uh, located back here. It's a, it's a concrete vault with an open bottom to it which will collect runoff from the building, the parking area, and, and this, this landscaped area in the back. Also have uh, <coughs> building elevation so the facade will be a, uh, a gray color gray uh, metal panel um, if anyone has any questions I'll try and answer them for you anyone in the audience have any questions <clears throat> not seeing any board members Paul were our engineers good with the uh, retention systems Yes, uh, and just a point of clarification, the reason it was tabled 
last month was uh, emergency vehicle access and Ray can point on the plan to the uh, the cul-de-sac bulb that was added since last uh, since the initial submission uh, our fire official has some concerns about emergency vehicles being able to maneuver properly uh, so they agreed the applicant agreed to put in a cul-de-sac bulb so the emergency vehicles can maneuver properly any further questions from board members are you hearing any I'll entertain a motion I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You're good to go. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I don't want to take all the motions. You can take them. <laughs> okay, Paul. Okay, under new business, uh, first item. 21-4-C Eastside Church of Christ. Uh, applicant is requesting conditional use approval to establish a church in an existing building pursuant to Monroeville Zoning Ordinance number 1443 as amended. Section 401 and Table 201C permitted uses, conditional uses, yard, and area requirements. The property is located at 4314 Old William Penn Highway in the C2 Business Commercial Zoning District and known as Tax Parcel 743B152. Applicants present. Yes. yes. Please sign in if you're going to speak and state your name for the record. Uh, Michael Damien. Grady Huggins. Please proceed. Um, I'm an evangelist with the, the East Side Church of Christ. We're a group of about 40 members right now. Uh, we've been meeting at 4415 Old William Penn uh, for the past four years, uh, we're outgrowing that space, and so we've been looking for a new space, uh, and we're asking to be allowed to, to meet in this building 4314. Uh, the renovations would be fairly minimal, mostly just taking down some walls to make one large auditorium space. Um, <coughs> that, that's the old Ezor's Racket Club, isn't it? Yes, correct. Okay. It's a Penn Office Center. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. After that, right. <laughs> So, um, but if you all have any questions for us, um, we're, we're glad to, to answer them. Anyone in the audience have any questions? Not seeing any board members. No questions from the board. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to accept. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're good to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Paul. Okay, the final item, 21-2-Z, uh, <coughs> dash dash Old Stone Commons. Applicant is requesting to rezone a 43.01 acre parcel of property, uh, which I received notification yesterday that, that it's actually going to be reduced down to 34 acres uh, that they want to rezone. There's a portion that's going to remain as it is. Uh, most of the property is currently zoned C2, business commercial. Uh, they want to rezone it to R4, multifamily, and as conservancy to R5, multifamily residential. The property is located behind the existing Giant Eagle and known as tax parcels uh, 744F29, 744F41, 744F43, 744F51, 744F160, and 744F145. Thank you, Paul. Applicants present, please come <coughs> forward. I will sign in also. Thank, Thank you. you. And state your name for the record. Yes, sir. My name is Jim Holcomb. I'm with Millcraft Investments. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the property owner uh, of Old Stone Commons uh, JV. Okay. And it's just give me a second. Oh, well, we, we discussed this property that there were issues a while back from the residents down below on Red Oak Court yes and I understand after talking with you that those issues have been resolved the act, I believe the applicant will discuss that this evening but okay. uh, they've been in uh, communication with the Red Oak Court people for quite some time okay thank you 
So I'm sure you're all very familiar with the property, and I will get to your question about the Red Oak Court folks uh, very briefly. Okay. Um, so the vacant area behind the Target and the Giant Eagle mm -hmm. uh, off Strohshine and Monroeville Boulevard. Um, the usable portion of the site uh, is zoned uh, C2 um, business currently most of the large usable area, which is the plateau that you can see from the parking lot. Um, there's also an area zoned S Conservancy around the perimeter, which faces Old Stone Court and uh, some other S zoning uh, that surrounds the property. Uh, there's a portion of it that is zoned currently R4 for multifamily residential and a few parcels that are also zoned S uh, on the opposite side near the apartment building um, off Strohshine Road. Um, the, uh, excuse me for just a second. Um, the portion that is shown green, the large green area here that is the S Conservancy is what got modified from our uh, original acreage. We are proposing to leave that as S Conservancy. It was just an, you know, an inadvertent mistake. Um, so the reason for the rezoning request is the site has been fallow for 30 years. Um, there have been no prospects for any uses permitted in the C2 zone for many years, and that's very unlikely to change in the future, especially in light of the expansion of online shopping, et cetera, and not to mention uh, the pandemic. Uh, Millcraft has worked with the current property owner over the last couple of years on two tasks. One is to identify the most appropriate use of the property uh, and, and do that based upon its features and its location. And the other is to develop an understanding and eventually a written agreement with the Timberland Estates Homeowners Association, uh, who is Red Oak Court, right, mm -hmm. and all of the individual residents in that organization. I think, if I recall correctly, there's 17 of them. Um, so uh, you may be aware that the, those, those owner, our owners and the uh, current residents had reached an agreement many years ago about making it commercial and what the uh, conditions would be to allow it to be big box retail. And that just was incongruous with a residential use that we would desire to use on the site. So we met with them and, and over a series of two years identified all their concerns, reached out an agreement with language uh, that was satisfactory to them and it's been signed as an association and by all the individual residents. Do we have any of those documents? Uh, you do have a couple of the exhibits from that, but I did not provide the entire written agreement. I would like to have that. Okay. We'll certainly supply that. Um, okay. I, I can tell you that, uh, um, you know, they'll be notified of the public hearing, et cetera, uh, before, the, before the council. Uh, I will touch on the main conditions of it. So I don't think I brought the exhibit that you have, but you will see one uh, in your possession that includes some curvy lines uh, and some cross sections of what would represent view corridors. Um, <coughs> right, so I think, I think the one you have in front of you, Mr. Stevenson, is, is the first page of that exhibit and uh, okay. there's a second that goes with it. That's this one. So one of the, one of the uh, major points was the construction of a privacy wall that we would construct the, at the top of the, of the slope close to the border of the C2 and the zoning uh, and, the, and the S zone, right? So that it can keep privacy, keep people from entering their backyards and seeing into their backyards. Thank you. That we, uh, the world can see? Yeah. So uh, the, the cross sections are, are AA, BB, CC and DD. The intent of those is from each of those perspectives where those start at the homeowner's residence in Red Oak Court, looking up the hill and over the 15 Bruce Hall privacy wall, what are the views? And we've agreed to limit the heights of any buildings so that they stay be beneath that inclined plane created by, that, by those view sheds, okay. right? So that's, that's the major portion of the agreement. Also uh, that, that we have, uh, you know, obviously some responsibility and we'll create an association that will maintain and make sure that debris and dying trees or anything that happens in that conservancy zone can be taken care of and they have one person to be able to call and not have to try and track anyone down. Um, and uh, I, I think I'm forgetting something, so... Um, That'll be given to the Homeowners Association, is that correct, for that one person? 
Uh, yes, yes. We will we will have a constant point of contact with you know Dr. Edelstein currently, but it could be it could be whoever you know takes his place as president of the association. Right. Right. Uh, and uh, so so you know the, the the privacy wall, the height restrictions, and the maintenance are the key tenants of it. We've also agreed that as after construction of the wall, uh, we would supplement with landscaping as necessary. Uh, and uh, also that we would construct that sound wall first before we do other <coughs> vertical construction. So as part of the preparation of the site, <coughs> the wall will be constructed before we would, you know, apply for a building permit. We might apply, but before we would start constructing the building uh, or any buildings on the site. What, the, what, what's the wall uh, going to be constructed of? It is identical to the existing sound wall that faces Target and Giant Eagle right there. Uh, that was what the, the residents requested, that we not vary from that. What is that? Uh, it is, it is concrete. It is tinted concrete. It is. Um, I'm going to try and describe this properly. Yeah, it's kind of a composite. It, it's it's made of concrete, but it's it's notched so that instead of having piers or having to be driven deep into the ground, its shape with uh, you know three sides with a short angle, a long straight, and a short angle provided lateral stability. Oh, there you go. Right here in our sound package, I included the detail. Okay. So, so here's here is the shape of the wall. Okay. Apologize, I forgot that I had been smart enough to include it. I'm impressed. <laughs> my, I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad looking wall either. No, no, it's, and it it goes with what's there. So. Yeah. And they can also it, add vegetation on both sides to you know buffer it even more. So you didn't have to change the height of the wall over? No, we don't. It's, it's really, it's two eight-foot sections stacked, buried a foot deep, and it's 15 feet where it currently is, and only 15 feet, you know, in general, uh, where, it, where it stands. So um, I, I think, you know, that covers all the non-legalese parts of the agreement. Okay. And we'll certainly provide it to Mr. Wheel um, after the fact. Um, so we, you know, in, in doing that study, I, as I said, one of the key tasks was, you know, identifying the best use of the property. And we've concluded that some combination of apartment units and townhomes is the most appropriate use. On the Red Oak Court side, we have estate homes. On, uh, you know, we have a lot of natural area on another side. On the back side, we have some large apartment buildings and, and we have a giant eagle on a target. So this is sort of a great transition between all of those uh, disparate uses and it will allow the property to, to come back onto the tax rolls. Uh, and we also believe, you know, the reasons for that are the lo location. It's readily accessible, won't burden unduly any traffic, which has already been designed for a more intense commercial use. Um, you know, a traffic study would be done as part of any actual development plan that was presented for the property. But we would anticipate that any road that is, uh, that, that any um, uh, project would include a construction of an access road between the Giant Eagle service driveway that that's wraps the parking lot and Strohshine Road. Um, is this a rendering? That's a, I, I wouldn't say it's a rendering. What we're trying, what we're trying to present is some concept of what might be there, right? We have not developed a plan. This is step one. Uh, we, I will show you in a moment, and I included in your package, an example of, of a project that might be done. It's a first concept to say, okay, does something work here, and how does it work? And I'll get into that in just one second. All right. um, so uh, in addition to, to the driveway, uh, we think that, you know, that would provide convenient access to community residents and reduce burden on the existing intersection at Strohshine and, and Monroe Hill Boulevard. So the as I said, the final design isn't completed. Um, we'll do that over the coming months, but we thought it would be helpful if we did show you one concept uh, of what might be. By the way, I had been showing you the proposed, the existing <coughs> zoning, and let me point out the new proposed zoning maintains the S district, replaces the rest of the property as R5, leaving one small parcel that's not part of this that's contiguous with the apartment buildings in the to be a consistent straight line zoning there. 
So where would your proposed access be to the site? Construction access? Coming right up. Okay. Um, so I will answer. I, I don't know if I've got you upside down or right side up, but uh, let's try to make it the same as the way I had the last one. Let's try it the other way. If you orient it so that you can see it, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so uh, Target and Giant Eagle are to the right, or page right here. Um, the ring road that goes near the Giant Eagle between that and the vacant parcel is shown on the right-hand edge of the page. Um, again, this is a concept. It's not a plan. Uh, but the thought is we have a connection that's already graded in down to Strohshine Road down here, and that's where we would like to you know, make that continue. Um, it avoids the conservation zone. It avoids the existing gas line that crosses the property, uh, and it's a direct route. And what we've done in this concept is to try and make a direct connection between the parking lot at Giant Eagle and Strohshine Road without any direct frontage of any homes or apartment buildings on it. Just use it as an access so it's not a, a safety hazard and it's, it is not a traffic concern that you all have to hear about for the coming years, right? It's a, it's a way for the, the apartments and the townhomes to be connected and then everything that is actually an apartment or a parking area or a townhome is served off of a side street from that access. Again, one concept, but I think that's from an apartment marketing and from a townhome marketing point of view. If we'd like people to come here, that's the way we're going to need to do it. <clears throat> uh, and what is the grade of that road? Um, you know, I don't know. I'm going to uh, ask that Ray Gusty, who's already signed in and has uh, testified on another matter, uh, step forward, and he might be able to answer that question a little bit. It, it's around 12%. That's pretty steep. Yeah. That's what, it, that's what it took to get from the pad. You know, we, we were stuck with this grade, and we're stuck with this grade at Strohshine Road. We actually, you know, lengthening it out with the curves and everything, but it lengthens it out. Yeah. So it, 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 we got it to, like, it's, it's around 12%, though. That's the best we could do. <clears throat> okay. That's Thank you. Steve. Hey, Ray, question for you. <clears throat> Is most of the... Cotton Phil going to stay on site? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they'll be, I mean, the, the pad is fairly, as you know, fairly level now. We'll have to do some, some minor grading, but the goal is to balance everything on site. Okay. This also, by the way, does give you a good look at where the sound wall is proposed to be. Sound wall, privacy wall. Uh, it's, and you get a better idea of what the shape of that is as well. The, the goal here is that we will extend that so that it overlaps with the existing end of the existing sound wall and is not attached to it. So from below or above, it appears to be a continuous wall, but that still allows a gate to be between the two of them to access the pond or the gas line as necessary. Okay. Uh, I think that kind of wraps it up. Uh, what I'd like to do is ask if you have any other questions that haven't come out already. I would first ask anyone in the audience have any questions, come forward. If not, turn it over to the board members. Thank you. <clears throat> I've asked most of mine already. So. <laughs> I know some people that live down there. and Sure. Uh, I know them all very well, too. <laughs> I'm is, sure you do by This now. has been an a <laughs> interesting and long process, but they are all actually very pleasant to deal with and uh, always straightforward. and. We were able to resolve everything through compromise very well, you know, and, the, uh, honestly, and that's, that's uncommon in this, in this era. And you'll supply us with that documentation? Yes, sir. Okay. What's the development timeline? Um, boy, I, I don't think we even have a plan yet, okay. so um, I, it's a difficult <clears throat> one for me to answer. Uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's a... So obviously, it's an exciting piece of pro property, and we'd like to move move it forward uh, quickly. Any other questions from board members? I would I would just like to point out that people watching at home, this is only a rezoning. This is not land development. Uh, so if the rezoning is approved tonight, they still have to go through the entire land development process. So somebody that just tuned in, uh, this the, the project has not been presented tonight. It's only the rezoning. And this is only an example. Yes. Right. 
understood and hope our viewers do also. Not hearing any more questions from the board, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Thank you for Have coming. Good evening. That's big time. Yep. Is it? Well, that's been empty for a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's wonderful. Motion to adjourn. Well, I guess I will entertain one more motion. I make a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.